so over the weekend, we got we saw that Trump got acquitted from his impeachment trial. Um, a lot of you guys probably know my opinion about the impeachment trial. I think that it's it was a waste of time. Um, I think that if you really wanted to get Trump on what he did for January 6th, which I do agree that it's it, it was unwarranted and he did uh, incite violence, um, but you can get him on criminal charges. Right. So if the if the goal was to make him pay for his crimes, then bring him up on criminal charges as a private citizen rather than trying to impeach him when he's already out of office, which there is no way that that the Democratic Party, the members in the Democratic Party in both the Senate and the House don't know that that was going to be a controversial issue. And it was because I I, I didn't watch a lot of the impeachment because, again, I, I thought it was a waste of time. You could have taken this as a criminal case uh, and tried him for tradition, tried him for inciting violence. Um, and and probably gotten him either put in some kind of white collar prison or essentially barred him from running for public office um, or something. Right. Like this could have been a lot more beneficial had it not been an impeachment trial, uh, despite the fact that he lost the election. There's a new president in place. And all they're trying to say, and, and this is the big thing that they say, is, oh, well, we're trying to prevent him from running for office and, and not have Secret Service and, um, you know, get all these uh, foreign policy reports and things of that sort, which legitimate, I don't, I don't think he gives a fuck about foreign policy. I don't think he gives a fuck about running for politics again. He didn't want this job to begin with. He ran so that he would get more attention so that he can leverage it for a new season of The Apprentice. And now I think what he's going to do is is take all of the the momentum that he has built up and start his own fucking network, right? Like Trump TV or or he'll partner with Fox or he'll partner with uh, Parler or The Blaze or whatever. And he will platform himself and put all the people uh, that he likes that that are his toadies and they'll be put on the network for him i said this back in november and i will guarantee in the next year we'll probably see something like that because trump is not somebody that is going to be out of the public eye he thrives on attention he's a classic narcissist and a classic narcissist like that you know it isn't isn't going to just give up his his not his power but his public attention that's what he wants he wants the admiration of people the most, right? So he went about doing this. Again, I agree that he incited violence. I agree what happened at the Capitol was uh, was dangerous and was, I'm sure, very scary for the people that were involved. It was something that I thought would happen, but but I was like, well, maybe it won't because it seems like it's also like a crazy thing to happen. Uh, but here we are. Basically, what happened is they didn't get the th two thirds vote. Uh, they had to get at least sixty seven members of the Senate to say, yeah, we should we should impeach the dude. And they got fifty seven. They were down by ten. It was fifty seven to forty three. And they didn't get the two thirds vote. So he got acquitted acquitted again. Also, I want to say this dude has been in, it, it has been tried for impeachment twice. Both times, I think they were for. I think both times the decision to 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 impeach him was not the right thing to do. And if you were going to try to impeach him, you could have impeached him on the emoluments clause. You could have impeached him on a bunch of different shit. But the reason why they won't go after him for the emoluments clause specifically is because then every member of Congress would have something to answer to. Because they don't divest from their private enterprises. They don't divest from their side hustles of making extra cash. They still take gifts and money from lobbyists and corporations, and all of that would come into question. So they're not trying him for a crime that they can also be convicted of, even though if you want to impeach Trump, if you wanted to impeach Trump over the last four years, you had a way to make that shit happen. But instead, they went with uh, they went with pushing a conspiracy theory for four years of Russiagate and uh, and then now wasted everybody's time with an impeachment after he was no longer in office, which they know is a controversial move. 
which was something that they brought up. And this was something dangerous, too. I was, I, you know, I, I take care of this elderly lady. So she puts on the news. She puts on the evening news because she likes watching the evening news. And I was watching uh, Lester Holt. The journalist, quote unquote, journalist Lester Holt. And one of the reports was that um, they were essentially trying to say words like fight and uh, force. Right. Those those kinds of words are words that incite violence. So when people use them, that they're they're inciting violence. Right. Because Trump used like, oh, stop the steal. You got to fight for the election. You know, you got to you got to make sure that we, we we force we force them to to do what they think. And those were words of inciting violence. Now, the problem with that is you're 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 painting with a broad stroke. You're saying things like fight for 15 would be a call for violence. Force to vote would have been a call for violence. But they're not, right? We're not talking about a physical fight. We're talking about a political and strategical fight. We're talking about an ideological fight. We're not talking about go in, guns a blazing, you know, take a cue from fucking Steven Seagal and above the law or whatever fucking L. Steven Seagal movie there was, and bust through and, and you know, bah, fight, bah. no, we're talking about standing up and protesting. We're talking about dissent. We're talking about holding a government accountable for what they did. And that was one of the, uh, you know, impeachment manager's arguments was, oh, words like this incite violence. So anytime we see words like this, we should assume that they're going to incite violence. Very dangerous precedent to set when you paint with a broad stroke like that. You can dislike Trump, but don't don't use that as an excuse to essentially start giving away rights to essentially start, you know, fucking kneecapping movements on the left that are legitimately on the people's side. So, again, they wasted a they wasted a week. On something that could have been a criminal case, right? You could have made this a criminal case and pushed it up the courts. And you could have probably charged him with something. You could have probably found him guilty. But you didn't. You decided to try to impeach him. And because it was the grounds was impeachment and not and not an inciting violence as a criminal offense, inciting violence against the you know the government or whatever you kind of lost your argument. You made a bunch of slippery slope arguments and you kind of fucked it up. Now, here's the thing. At the end of the day, do I think Trump is going to run in 2024? No. The man is 74 now. In 2024, he'll be 78. He'll be pushing 80 years old. He's pumping himself full of speed, diet pills, whatever. And I don't think his body can fucking sustain that kind of shit. It just can't. The amount of drugs and energy it takes to fucking run a First of all, American campaigns are about 700 years. They're just nonstop. The the day after, like November, I think it was like November eighth or ninth or something that we found out the election results. I don't know. Some sometime early in November, we finally found out the election results from for, you know after all the counting and um, double checking and all that shit. The following day, they were talking about twenty twenty four. The following day, so it's like okay, we just went through this insane campaign cycle and we're gonna start it again. The day after. The American election cycle never fucking ends because the ele American election cycle is easily one of the most commercialized things, right? Like, like capitalism is so awful and neoliberalism is so awful that it is commercialized voting itself. They can run ads, they can run committees, they can you know, have these think tanks, like that's how bad capitalism is right now. That's how bad neoliberalism is. And that is the economic system that is currently running the government. Trump doesn't want 
this job. He never wanted the job to begin with. When he won, he was, I'm sure he was like, Bob, fuck. Like, this is one of the most demanding jobs in the world to be a leader of an entire nation, especially the leader of, of a megalomaniacal nation that's, you know, hell bent on uh, global conquest through military prowess. Like, that's a big job, regardless of whether you think it's good or not, right? Whether you think it's good or evil, it's still a big ass fucking job. And I don't think he wants it. And somebody that's 78 years old should not be in charge of that position. They're just too old. They don't have the energy and the mental faculties and the resources to fucking get the job done. So to use, oh, Trump will run again, or we shouldn't have him have access to all of this shit, are not good excuses to run this as an impeachment trial. This should have been a criminal fucking case, and you might have actually won. There wouldn't have been this congressional uh, bullshit where, I, you know, I, I saw somebody saying like, oh, it was because, um, you know, Biden wouldn't allow uh, witnesses to come forward to testify or something like that. And again, I don't, I didn't. I didn't pay attention to it. There were more important things like a coup in fucking Ecuador, a possible coup in Ecuador that needed that needed to be talked about. There, there's a farmer strike in India that's going on right now that needs to be fucking talked about. There's people that are in food lines right now in winter weather to make sure that they can feed family that nobody's fucking talking about. There's new strains of COVID-19 that no one's fucking talking about. We still haven't received our $2,000 checks. And yes, it is a $2,000 check, not a bullshit $1,400 check, because if it was going to be a $1,400 check, you fucking say $1,400 check that no one's fucking talking about. And by no one, I mean corporate media, not the, the indie news has been covering it. People on my level, people like Hard Lens Media, you know, Graham Elwood, Ron Placone, Fiorella, Nico House, all these folks, they've been talking about it. And then they get demonetized. But all of those things are far more important than trying to impeach a president that's no longer, no longer in power. You want to prevent him again. You want to make an example. Great. Try him in a criminal court. You wasted a week of people's time. And then the craziest thing was I, I saw a, a political art, pol, a Politico art, uh, article. That one of the uh, House of Democrats aides was like, yeah, man, people just want to go home for Valentine's Day. What? Yeah. OK, so rich politicians want to go home and celebrate Valentine's Day. This fucking commercialized that again, another thing that how it shows you how terrible capitalism and neoliberalism is. It took the concept of love. And it commercialized it. And it was like, I bet we can make money on the fact that you love somebody. It's like, oh, you want to love somebody? Here's a way that you can spend money to show that, oh, you don't want to spend money. Then I guess you don't love somebody. And they want to go do that. They want to go celebrate that. And look, if you celebrate Valentine's Day, that's fine. Whatever. Right. But let's let's be honest here. A lot of people this year probably couldn't celebrate the Valentine's Day the way that they wanted to. Getting a nice meal, flowers, roses, chocolates, wine, whatever, because it just either wasn't possible for them or it's out of their budget. And these assholes in Congress that are out of touch won't approve a stimulus bill to actually help people, won't approve UBI, won't approve Medicare for all. Those people are like, we deserve the right to go and celebrate the way that we want to with expensive wine, champagne, and chocolates and meals and whatever. So we're just walking away from this thing that we made a huge deal out of. But this is how it works. Could have tried him as a uh, in a criminal case. But you didn't. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's look at some comments before we move on to the uh, to the next uh, next segment here. Holly says, uh, yeah, I'm shocked. It's a gigantic waste of time. Uh, Trump is in the club. Yeah, Trump is Trump is one of them. They're, and that's part of the reason why they don't like him is because he's too outspoken about the way things work, 
because even though he's in the club, he's still an outsider in the club. They still don't particularly like him. He's he's not poised like they are. He doesn't know how to lie like they do. You know, he's a liar, but he lies differently. And he's honest about some shit, too, because because he knows if he's bombastic about it, then he gets media attention from it. Uh, they would all go down if they tried if if they tried monuments. Yeah, that's that's why they won't. Every single one of them would go down. Every single one of them would be uh, would would have to leave the office. Uh, they're so out of touch. They don't represent or feed anyone. According to Nancy Pelosi, they do. That was that was a shit back in November with uh, with Wolf Blitzer where she freaked the fuck out. She was like, "We represent them. We feed them. I feed them. I feed my people. I have ice cream to feed my people with. Don't you dare! Don't you dare, Wolf Blitzer!" Holly says, I don't, I don't think Trump will run either. Uh, I don't think he wants to use influence. I do think he wants to use his influence. I do think he wants to use his influence. He's just going to use it on, on a television platform. He'll probably invent himself a fucking streaming network or a streaming service or something. You know? Corporations are people, yeah. Uh, I will, I will uh, talk about that in a in a second. A pox on all of them, Holly. You're one of the first, uh, one of the few people that uses the uses pox. I've I've used that when I get really mad. I I I I say um, a pox on your house, uh, and uh, and no, and a lot of people don't get it. Uh, there's also mass deportations in Haiti. Yeah, yeah, and and again, that's not something that is being addressed a whole lot of. Uh, but hey, Joe Biden, right? Friend of the immigrant. He wouldn't do any of that sort of stuff, despite the fact that he was part of an administration that had the most amount of deportations uh, it, from previous presidents. Hashtag where's 2000. Uh, Holly, did you see the pretty decorations Mrs. Biden put on the White House lawn? I sure did. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I still can't get my check. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, let's look at some Rockman comments while we're at it. Uh, I would say that Trump incited uh, rabble rousing and a mob being many heads and no brain did what mobs do. Uh, also, I think uh, the uh, that FBI agitators and agent pr provocateurs may have been involved. Uh, you're, you're, that's that's a, a possibility. We, we do know from the blue leaks that um, Law enforcement does work with right wing and white supremacist organizations, so the FBI might have been involved. They might have they might have incited uh, more of it, right? Ooh, whoa! Accidentally kicked the table there. Sorry about that. But um, also, don't forget the cops are the ones that let them in. The cops are the ones that let them in, so they know. So they know they knew what they were doing. Uh, you know, and then they and then they showed all this footage of, uh, you know, uh, oh, man, look at the violence that the cops had to go through where they were being pressed up against the doors and all that. Well, yeah, because another cop fucking let them in. How are we not bringing that person up on some kind of charges? The Schmuckers lobby is big in. DC, uh, we're all getting enrolled in Jelly of the Month Club, and there will be no two thousand dollars, says Sarah. <laughs> oh man, I don't even like Schmuckers that much. Can we get a? Can we get a? Can we get a vote on what what jelly we get? I'd like a strawberry rhubarb, if I can. Uh, if I can, if I can get a rhubarb going. Uh, I might uh, I might be excited for that jelly of the month club. <laughs> Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook, especially Facebook and YouTube. They often uncensor people, uh, un unsubscribe people, and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, 
whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. And go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. And I hope to see you at the next video.